her back in. And I like it. Something we can make a mess in. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> She's here every week. Um, all right, sound check. Tell me your favorite food. What's your favorite food? Um, well, breakfast is cereal. Cereal. What's your favorite food? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. What's your favorite food? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. What's your favorite food? Thinking. You're thinking. There must be a lot of them and hard to choose with just thinking. one. Bacon. Oh, bacon? Yes. I thought he said he was thinking. Bacon. Mine's pizza. Chicken nuggets, says Alira. Chicken nuggets are very good. Chicken nuggets are very good. I eat chicken a lot for dinner. I do. It's very versatile, I feel. Um, okay, good. So, last chance for the donation of the SP to the SPCA dog toy. Um... Last chance to turn in your mosaic piece from Farm Week. Let me see if I could show you where we're at with that. Um, right there. We're in pieces. I'm still missing lots. There's the result of our striped zebra from last week after the little kids put their pieces on it. Um, last chance for any flat miss summer pictures. Um, hands up to your ears, hang low. Um, last chance for any pictures of artwork from my virtual kids, my zoomies. No reminders for next week because this is the last week. Is anybody sad like me that this is the last week? You're sad. You're sad. I hear you. I'm going on vacation too. It's time. So yes, sad to see it's over, but happy that vacation is near. Um, so what we need to know about the end of the program, the program um, ends on Friday. If you look at your little time tracker, you will see that there is a big black square in Saturday. That's because the program ends the day before on Friday. You need to have your minutes submitted to me by Friday afternoon, like 2, 2.30. I have the little kids class at one o'clock. Right after that is over, I'm going to start tabulating everyone's minutes, finding out who finished the program, who earned what pins, get all your prize packages together, find out the team that's in the lead, the biggest reader of the whole summer, all that good stuff. So I need you to get your minutes in by 2, 2.30 Friday afternoon. Um, and then I will go live on Saturday at one o'clock to go over all of the prizes um, and announce all the winners. So you need 600 minutes to finish the program. However you um, gained those minutes, if you did 600 in one week, you're done. Um, or, you know, if you kept to the minimum every week, then you should be finished with 600 at the end. Um, and of course, if you were trying for the super prize for the biggest reader, you're going to read more than that. Um, I have one more August event before our fall schedule comes out. That is Wreck This Masterpiece. That's on August 24th at 6 p.m. Um, it is an in-person event. 
But if you don't want to come in person, I'll put a masterpiece aside for you. You could do it on your own time with your own supplies. I will not be virtual for that though. So you just kind of do whatever you want with that. Registration is open. You can call us or you can go fill out the form um, from the Facebook event. Okay, um, top reader last week is Alira. Congratulations yeah. to Alira again. 2,400 minutes, but I do want to mention Morgan because she read 1,200 minutes. So that was our next top reader. Um, and I have some big news. Are you ready for this? Big news. Yellow team is in the lead. Anybody on the yellow team? Nobody here on the yellow team? That is big news. They have overtaken the orange team. So yellow is at 16, 237. And orange is at 15, 300. So yellow team has overtaken orange by at least a thousand minutes. So whatever you do this week will be very important for your team. It will be the deciding factor to see what happens at the end of this week. It's so exciting. I love it when it happens like this. Oh. <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see. Tune in on Saturday. The replay will be available shortly after that. Oh, Alira must be on yellow. Yay! <laughs> Um, okay, so this week's theme, who knows what we're doing this week? Yes. Um, myths and legends. Myths, le legends, and real, strange and unusual things that you would think that can't be real, but yes, it is. So, um, some books, the BFG, Big Friendly Giant, right? Giants are mythical legends. Anybody ever read this book? Yeah. yeah. I, think I watched the movie. And the movie. Yes, they made a movie out of it. I read this book to my kids. It was a lot of fun. I loved learning about Snodge Cumbers and all of his fun vocabulary words. Um, Pip Barlett's Guide to Magical Creatures. Fuzzles are everywhere in your kitchen, in your backpack, in your underwear drawer, which is a problem since fuzzles burst into flames at the worst possible moments. <laughs> Bob. Has anybody read this book? Bob. Um, Bob is a little creature. It's been five years since Livy and her family had visited Livy's grandmother in Australia. Now that Livy's back, she has the feeling she's forgotten something really, really important about Gran's house. And it turns out she's right. Bob, a short, greenish creature dressed in a chicken shoot, suit didn't forget Livy or her promise. He's been waiting five years for her to come back, hiding in a closet like she told him to. He can't remember who or what he is, where he came from, or if he even has a family. But five years ago, Livy promised she would help him find his way back home. Now it's time to keep that promise. Clue by clue, Livy and Bob will unravel the mystery of where Bob comes from and discover the kind of magic that lasts forever. The Binder of Doom. This is the follow-up series to The Notebook of Doom. Um, this is Brute Cake. They have all kinds of really strange creatures. Um, Notebook of Doom has like 13 books. So um, check those out. How to Train Your Dragon, the complete book of dragons. I'm sure you've seen the movie, right? This is a guide to all of the dragon species. Um, so if I hold it up like this and then thumb through, it's like his diary where he had taken all kinds of notes and talks about all the different dragons and all of their you know, special qualities. I think there's, yeah, there's a chart in the back that kind of... It's like a key with all of um, these drawings and here's what they mean. So that is a cool book. Um, how about some real stuff? The Little Book of Slime. All things slimy, you know, snails, frogs, um, slugs, slimy stuff in water, pond slime. Look at this tube slime. 
Isn't that the weirdest thing? That's a diver, by the way. So look at how big that is. Strange things, but real things. And animals with their own night lights glow. Angler fish, yes, you probably remember that from Finding Nemo. Um, Dory encounters him. Um, that's called bioluminescence. Look at some things glow on land. They don't necessarily have to be in the water. We know what else glows on land? Yes? Lightning bugs. Lightning bugs, yes. Okay, so those are some of the books. I have other books to go over with you, but I'm going to hold on to them for a little bit until we get to that part of the program. So why don't we take out our kit, um, our week five kit and our week five paper. We've got a really fun word search of all kinds of mythical creatures that we are going to start together. Let me point this down here and get my papers in order. I've got some videos to show you. We're gonna have a good time today. And of course, the best part is what? We're making slime. There's also bioluminescence in Moana. Yes. Oh, I didn't see that movie. Oh, you have to see that movie. <laughs> and um, that's important when we got our kit, we got all the papers coming. Oh. We did that. Oh. Okay. We didn't know which was which, so we just Oh, you should have just asked me. I would have helped you out. Okay, so we have this mythical creature word search. Let's see if we can find some of them together. Um, also, how about some of these really weird mythical creatures? They have some strange sounds, their names. Do we know what Bigfoot is? Yeah, we're gonna talk about him. Um, how about a centaur? Do we know what a centaur is? There's a hydra. Well, yeah, hydra is on the list. <laughs> Your brother is a mythical creature? Yeah. <laughs> Jack, do you have your hand up? No. Oh, you're stretching? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Centaur is half man, half horse. Right? Walks on all fours. Not to be confused with um, satire. That's how you say that, right? Satyr. Satyr. Set. Tire. Oh. He's also half man, half horse, but he only walks on two legs. <laughs> Chimera or Chimera? How do you say that one? Chimera. Huh? Chimera. 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 See, I am not up on my Greek <laughs> mythical creatures. <laughs> Um, I had to look up a, a good portion of them just to find out what they were. <laughs> Lion, goat, and snake, that one. Cyclops, we know Cyclops has the one eye. Dragon, elf, fairy, gnomes, those are all pretty common. Griffin, a lion body, but the head and wings of an eagle. Hydra, multi-headed uh, water monster. Water snake. Kappa, a green guy with like a turtle shell, but kind of human-like. Mm -hmm. Leprechaun, we know. Medusa. Loch Ness Monster, yep, there's Medusa. Her hair is a bunch of snakes. <laughs> Mermaid, Pegasus. Phoenix, the immortal bird. Troll, unicorn, vampire, werewolf, yeti, zombie. Do we find any? Did we find any? I found cyclops. I found three. We found zombie. Zombie. Oh yeah. Zombie. Zombie is down towards the bottom. We found Medusa. Cyclops goes up and down in the middle. Zombie, Cyclops, oh yes, 
They're in the same area. I uh, found Pegasus that goes up the left side. Alira found mermaid, vampire, and Pegasus. I don't think. <laughs> That's purely by accident. Unless we have the word cat in one of our words, which I don't think that's. It's very long. I bet you that one goes diagonal. Satir. Did I say that right? Satyr. Satyr. <laughs> I just make up my own. I mean, I'm sure we're not pronouncing it the correct, like, Greek way either. Right. I know a lot from that show that used to be on TV. Vampire. I think Gracie already told us about that, right? I, and we found Hydra, too. Oh. I found Rock Ness Monstro on the second to bottom one. Oh, backwards. Yes, very good. Loch Ness Monster. Okay. Um, I hope everyone, all of my roomies, remembers what these um, characters are, these creatures because I'm going to test your knowledge later. Uh -oh. We're going to play a little game off camera. Okay, while you're doing that, let's talk about our gummies. I'm going to bring mine out. Everyone got two gummy bears, right? And they said to soak them, one of them anyway. What happened? What did you observe? Big. It grew big. Did it get as big as you thought it would? Yeah. Did you touch it? No. It is very slimy. In fact, I just put, I just accidentally knocked a piece off of mine. I'm going to leave mine in there um, for a couple days. I'm going to see what happens. Little pieces are falling off because the, as it soaks up the water, the edges kind of start to get delicate and brittle not brittle i do it does smell good i could smell it um so the other one was just to compare the difference in sizes so you can see how um big it grew i'm gonna take out my other one So side by side, look, I'll even drop this one in the water. So side by side, you can see it did get bloated and full of water. You can eat the other one if you want to. Now I got that one in there. I guess I'll just let that one soak too. So the idea of doing this was because I wanted to show you, um, I wanted to introduce you to tardigrades. Has anyone ever heard of a tardigrade? You've heard of a tardigrade? They are called water bears. And what do we have? A bear in water. It's like it was meant to be. <laughs> um, I have 
a little video to show you from the Wild Kratts of Tardigrades. Does anyone watch the Wild Kratts or have watched the Wild Kratts? Like yeah, you learn a lot from them, right? So I have this little video. Um, it's very short. Hey, Blur! Wanna play tag? Hold on, let me just get it right. What? Now you're not up for a chase? Come on, cheetahs love gazelles, and you can help me get to the next level of the food web. Come on, bet you can't catch me. Show me that speed, that awesome this gazelle catching right. speed. Hold on. Oh, you're kidding me. Of course, you'd have to pick right now for a nap. Oh, okay, Blur, check yeah. this out. Hold on, okay. that's not right. Here we go. Tardigrades. So they've been to space. They are virtually indestructible. Um, they uh, are said that they would probably survive the apocalypse. Um, there's a, like about a thousand species and they live anywhere. They prefer bottoms of lakes, very moist um, habitats, wet environments, moss. They could survive to as low as 328 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So like boiling water, not gonna kill them. Um, boiling liquids, radiation, uh, mass amounts of pressure. Uh, they suck the juices right out of the algae with that siphon kind of nose that you saw. Um, so that is a tardigrade. He said they look, they said they look like gummy bears. Another reason why I had you soak in those gummy bears. Now I want to introduce you to, um, an axolotl. Yeah. Oh my goodness. We had no axolotls already. Yes. I heard that they added them to Minecraft. Do you know, do you know why they added them to Minecraft? to increase the awareness of their extinction because they are on their way out. Um, they're, they're native to Mexico. There's been a lot of water pollution in Mexico. There's been a lot of um, other aggressive fish that have been entered, that have been introduced into their habitats that are eating them. So they are on the verge of extinction. And so they added them to Minecraft to draw awareness to them. So if you weren't aware of them already, you are going to be now. I'm gonna show you a couple quick little videos. Um, which one do we wanna do first? Um, these are just like TikToks of a girl that raises them. You know what time it is. It's time to take care of babies. Because they poop a lot. Gross. Baby, excuse me. Look how tiny they are. Oh my god, I 
would die for you. Oh. My favorite thing when I come in here to take care of them is that all of them like look up at me like, hey lady, you got some worms? Forbidden vacuum time. Now comes my favorite part. Sir Edwin, here you go. Remember that name, oh, Sir yes. Edwin. Oh yeah. Here you go. Look at him. Come here. Come so here. She's feeding them with these little tweezers. <laughs> Dramatic much. Boop. I just fed you. Stop looking at me. Okay, I guess one more. Fine, gosh. Okay, so that's when they're tiny. Then they grow up because they're related to um, salamanders. And we know how big salamanders can get sometimes, right? Hey, yo, pet check. She doesn't have to feed him with little tweezers anymore. And you'll notice that this one is black. Um, that's really kind of what their native colors are. But then you have one really? that could be pink. So mom and dad are going out of town for the weekend. <laughs> And grandma is going to check in with you. It's okay. We'll be back. Mm -hmm. Grandma's going to look in on you and make sure you're okay. And you are in charge of your little sister. Make sure that she doesn't get into any shenanigans over the weekend. Are you worried? <laughs> I will be back tomorrow, okay? It's not a long trip. You'll be okay. I love you. So we're actually, I'm doing a little oxalatl craft with the little kids on Friday. Um, but I just wanted to show you those videos. Another reason why they are um, extinct is because they're used a lot in scientific research because their limbs grow back. Um, so people are really studying them to see why they regenerate their limbs so much. Okay, um, so our craft today as we know is slime and the reason why um is because of this book right here pink is for blobfish this is a blobfish he's pretty ugly looking isn't he um so i thought we would make blobfish slime there he is he's a real creature though i told you some strange things unusual things that you would think um, that can't be real. Or like this pygmy seahorse. Sea Look at those. They're weird looking. Everything in this book is pink. And everything in this book is also real, a real living creature. Um, something that's not, or maybe it is, we don't know. These books I wanna share with you. Well, we know about the Loch Ness Monster, right? And there's the movie Water Horse. What was the mixture in the other cup? Alira spilled. Oh, that was liquid starch. Um, that is what you need in order to make the slime become slime. So um, unfortunately, if you're spilled, I don't think that your slime is going to work. Um, we talked about Bigfoot. I said we were going to return to him. Bigfoot, Scooby-Doo, the terror of Bigfoot beast. Hey, this is a choose your own adventure and it's got colored pictures in it. So you read and then at the bottom, it gives you a choice. What do you wanna do, this, this, or this? And you turn to that page and it's all about finding Bigfoot. Pop Tropica, chasing down Bigfoot. Harry and the Hendersons, anybody ever watch this show? This is an old show, you know who that is? Yeah, old show, Bigfoot. Friends of the family. Um, here is um, sparkly new friends. This is Yeti and Unicorn. These are beginning reader books for like kids in first grade, second grade, just learning how to read. These are acorn books, which is the rating from Scholastic. It comes before branches books. We have a bunch of branches books too, but acorn is below that. Um, the Yeti files meet the big feet. This is more pictures than book, I must say. There is not a lot of reading in this book at all, but a whole lot of pictures. 
I said that we would bring back Bird and Squirrel all tangled up because they are on the quest, the quest for finding Bigfoot. Um, what do you use to make it? Starch and water. I can make it later with her. Yeah, glue, starch, and water. A quarter cup of each. Two ounces. The unsolved mystery of Bigfoot. Is Bigfoot real? No. Maybe. No. Some say yes. Some say no. Some say maybe. Um, I'm going to show you a picture. Was it in this book or was it in the other book? Of the video. Here we go. So this was supposedly a video that somebody took when they were in the woods that started this quest to find out whether Bigfoot is alive or not. I'm pretty sure there is a group in the area that um, investigates Bigfoot sightings and said that they were seen in Pittston. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get out our bowl and our slime supplies and I'll tell you more about Bigfoot as we put this together. Um, so you want to stir the glue and the water together first. So your glue is colored. I'm hoping that it doesn't turn out to be um, red. It's supposed to be pink because it's pink is for blobfish slime, right? So I think maybe once we add everything together, it might lighten up a little bit. So we're going to scrape this glue into our bowl and then we're gonna add the water. The water is not what's in your cup. The water, I have some water on the table if you need it. There's also a little two ounce cup there for you to measure next to the water. Um, and we're gonna add that to the glue. So we're gonna put the glue in the bowl. I may have overdone it with the red food coloring a little bit. You just never know though. Okay, so Bigfoot is said to live in the forests, kind of um, in the Pacific Northwest. So Washington State, Oregon State, Northern California. However, there have been 1,300 sightings in Pennsylvania. Wow. How much water do you put in? Um, two ounces, the same size as this. So I have a little cup there next to the water that I provided for you to measure. I'm just gonna use my empty glue container and some water from my jar here. Now, most scientists will say that Bigfoot is not real but people who have said they saw him will swear by it. All right, so I've added the water to my glue. Here. And then you're gonna mix that up. That's why I went in. Yep, I did put paper towels out in case anybody needed them. Oh good, so it is pink. You all will be getting a big, Bigfoot pin if you read the required minimum for this week. I will give you a heads up to that. Your pin will be Bigfoot. There you go. Cool. Now we know what Bigfoot looks like, right? Everyone says that he's very big, he's very muscular, um, very hairy, very smelly too. They say that he's stinky, yes. Hairy like an ape, but has a human face. Now, his footprints are two feet long by eight inches wide. That's really big. So that's like, for example, a piece of paper is 11 inches, right? So one inch shy of a foot. His 
footprint is two feet. So his footprint is at least this big and eight inches wide, which a piece of paper is eight and a half inches. So basically, this is what you're looking at. I can't even get the whole thing on camera. This is his foot right there, two pieces of paper put together. That's how big he is. Yep, mix it up good, mix it up good. It is a very kind of bright pink, isn't it? <laughs> All right, now your other container is liquid starch. You may not need all of it, so I'm gonna caution you to pour a little bit in at a time. Um, you're going to stir as you're pouring it in, and when it's the consistency that you like, because it could be a little bit watery if you don't put enough starch in, but then if you put too much starch in, it could be really like thick and not stretchy. So you may have to, at some point, start mixing with your hands to make sure that it's all incorporated. This liquid starch is what you use for laundry. Oops, I spilled some of my starch. When I tried to take the cap off, it squirted out. I'm gonna open the rest of it over. There we go. So I'm gonna pour about half of it in right now. And stir, 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 stir. I like this version better than the borax, although Borax was getting like a really bad rap there for a little while. And it's, like it's only mainly like if you're going to ingest the borax that it's <laughs> dangerous for you. Um, but this is easier to work with. You could also use contact lens solution. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in. Yep, just be careful that it will continue to like congeal um, as you work with it. So you can try switching to your hands and then determining whether you need to add more starch. It does. Chewed up bubble gum. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm gonna put any more starch in mine. Yeah, she. We put up to there. Hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, we have just a little bit left. Yeah, that's what we have. Yeah. But you can take some in your mouth and go chew it for a while. I'm gonna try and get what's left in my bowl. Perfect. I love making air bubbles and popping them. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> it's like a, it like is. bubble wrap. Yeah, and it's like a, uh, a soother. Yes. Yeah. ASMR. Can you hear that? Yeah, actually, I think that maybe I used too much starch. It's not like really stretchy enough. There's actually something that you can do inside your thing. Inside your Guess what? Yes, I know. It, right? Alira thinks I'm funny because I was doing ASMR up against the speaker. <laughs> I will say that caution that 
your hands might turn a little pink because it is food coloring and food coloring can stain your hands. But it will fade, you know, just in case you're worried about those kinds of things. Um, it's a mason jar. Yeah, no, I have lots of them. And then, yeah, you just get these, like, they're from Ball. Ball makes them for wide mouth. And then the smaller ones are purple for, like, this, the, the narrow jars. And then I just use a regular jar ring to hold it on. And I turn that into, uh, yeah, you get, like, a four-pack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have lots of them. Lots of them. Oh, yeah, we like yeah, to do that, too. Quite, quite a bit. Mm. All right, Alira, good luck with your slime later on today. I hope it works out for you. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'll see everybody on Saturday at 1 o'clock to announce all of the prizes and the winners. Don't forget, get your minutes in by Friday around 2, 2.30. If you have any other weeks that you have not logged minutes, now is the time to get them in. It's not too late. I do have some of you that are missing weeks of minutes. You might be hearing from me um, closer to Friday just to confirm. All right, have a good week, everybody. Bye!